My guest today is Rebecca Grant. She's a beautiful therapist from Albuquerque in the USA. She runs a beautiful practice called Shanti Wellness, and she has two beautiful practitioners. She has been treating for massaging for 20 years. Her story is so similar to lots of therapists that have been doing it a long time. There's a lot of should ofs. I should have known this. I should have known this. I should have known this. And what I love about Becca's story is just her willingness to lean in to vulnerability and realize that she didn't really have all the answers, that she didn't know everything, and that that was okay. She was seeing around less than 10 clients a week and is now fully booked with a month out of wait list and also has two beautiful team members looking for a third in order to be able to grow her business and just does life in the most beautiful and authentic way, even when it's not easy. So I'm looking forward to sharing this story with you and I can't wait to see you on the other side. Hello, Becca. How are you today? Hello, I am doing good. That is good. Thank you so much for taking the time to sit down and chat with me a little bit about your story. We've been working together for about a year and a half, I think now. And I guess I just wanted to kind of hear a bit about your story. And I, I guess, where, where were you in your business journey? Like how long had you been treating for and how many clients were you seeing a week when we first started working together? Well, um, I have been in the massage business for 20 years but mostly working for other people and working intensely. And let's see, 2018, I decided I wanted to launch into my own practice, have my own thing only, which was super scary. And for a couple of years, I kind of staggered along and tried to figure things out as I could, saw the clients that I could get, um, but nothing, nothing really serious, although I thought I was a serious business person. And then in 2020, of course, we had all the shutdowns from COVID. And at that point, I realized I'd been in the business for 20 years. I couldn't maintain my body. My hands just didn't want to maintain what I had done before. So I realized that I needed to launch into something different. And I thought, well, it was either go get a job or or really make my practice into a real business, really learn, understand, and grow. And so I latched on to the latter one and looked for how to really organize myself and structure myself, which I had no idea what, I, what that meant. <laughs> and then I found your program and started working that program. I went from before COVID, I was seeing less than 10 clients um, a week and not because I didn't feel the stamina, but just because I wasn't able, I didn't know anything about marketing. I didn't know any, anything about how to bring clients in. So I was just like praying for, you know, clients. And now myself, I am fully booked, uh, actually almost a month out and sometimes more than that. And I have two staff members that work underneath me. And yeah, it's just been an amazing journey. That is phenomenal. And, and especially when you're, when you've been treating for 20 years, there's a certain level of mastery that comes with that in the treatment room, which I, I think often isn't spoken about, that it doesn't necessarily relate to being very busy in practice. Just because right. we've been doing it a long time doesn't necessarily mean, oh, we've just got this abundance of clients. It is about learning how to actually you know, take what you do in the treatment room and put that out there. What were some of the things that you that you had to learn? Or, or first of all, why did you choose us? We are from Australia. You're in the States. What made you go, okay, you know what? I think I'm going to work with these crazy people in an entirely different country. What was it about that that made you decide to work with coaches overseas? So I did my due diligence looking around to see coaching programs I wanted something that specifically targeted my area of, of focus, right? So I had looked in some other coaching programs that were more like blanket business coaching, but didn't specify like for service providers or especially for massage therapists. And it just didn't feel like I wanted somebody who knew what I've been, know what I've been through and, and knows how to move through, how to be with clients. And I talked to several people who I heard specifically the phrase, well, 
we don't necessarily know about your career, but you know, this is how a normal business runs. And that was a big turnoff. And I'd been kind of seeing more and more of your marketing pop up on Facebook and pop up on the, on the places that I frequent as a therapist. And I thought, huh, I wonder about this. And I let it percolate for months and months. And then finally, I just decided I really liked the energy. I watched all the webinars that, you know, anything I could listen to because I am a connecting person and I will like the, the offers that you have to give, but I really want to see what you look like, what your energy is, how you really are. And I really just liked the spark from you and James both. I watched webinars from both of you and I was like, well, you know what? They're really cool. And the accent really helps. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I just thought this looks fun. You guys were exactly targeting the things that I knew that I needed. I knew that there might be some different, uh, there's definitely differences between your country versus mine, but overall the business stuff, the marketing stuff, that's, that's pretty much solid across the globe. So I figured whatever the little things were that weren't going to match up to yours, I could figure out that stuff on my own. And that's exactly been the case. Yeah. And look, it's so, you're right, there's so many universal marketing principles that it doesn't matter where you are, the principles are the same. Yep. Uh, and that's, and, and it is completely different to have coaches that actually get like, if you've had a tough day, you can reach out and go, I, you know, and I can sit there going, I know, right? Like, you're <laughs> kidding me. This actually happens in business. Are we serious? Like, okay, now let's get you perched back up again and get you out there, you know, back in the arena, right. being able to, to fight another day. And that's, I think that that's really powerful. And I think that's part of, it's what you need as a coach is you need someone to, you need to have someone in your corner that will also call you out or call you up to be the best version of you, but also to have that just to have someone there that gets it on that level is really powerful. I know it's something I would have loved when I was running my own clinic. <laughs> it would right. have been great. Right. Okay. So you chose us because of the specificity, I guess, of, in terms of niching that we actually get that journey. And also you're right, the, the vibe and the energy is super important. And that's one of the reasons why we do a lot of webinars because, you know, if you come to a webinar and go, ah, that is so not what I needed cool <laughs> our marketing is working because if you come and then if you come to where we go yeah you know what I, I like the I like the energy I like the vibe I like the person I feel like I get them that's awesome it's exactly what we want in terms of then when you actually join when you join the program what are some of the things that you initially have put in place that have been a big game changer oh well I'd only been in my own practice for a couple of years and floundering. So literally I knew nothing. I just thought, oh, I'm super good therapist. People will flock to me because I'm super cool and I'm so good. And that kind of happened, word of mouth kind of happened. So I actually started from ground zero. I didn't realize that I was doing that, but I actually did. So I started the program and I had to learn everything, marketing and the bookkeeping side of things. Who knew that you had to like actually pay attention to that stuff? And, um, so I just really, and then, you know, having a mission, mission values, all of these things that are the building blocks to like grow on, I didn't have any of that in place and I didn't even know about them. So I was able to absorb it. And of course, those times that I got stuck, I'd be like, I can't do this. I don't know what this is. And of course my coaches, you guys would be like, you can just move on, keep going. And so I've been able to even take what I initially thought, which was a very narrow-minded thinking, and then cycle through the program and then kind of cycle back and expand and broaden all of those things. So the marketing, now I understand I've implemented stuff. I'm like, oh, let me go back and, and, and open that up and see what that is. And, you know, the, and bookkeeping and, you know, aftercare stuff for clients is the latest thing that I've been researching, trying to connect with people. It's just all right there. And I've had to implement every little piece because I had none of that in place, none of it. And then of course I have super high expectations of myself. So I should have had this done like yesterday. I should have had all of this learned yesterday. And I'm also working on myself pretty diligently to allow it to unfold as it needs to. 
And some stuff is taking a little bit longer than I thought it would. You know, I, I actually need more than a day to absorb 24 hours of knowledge. Who knew that? But um, did that answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And it, I think there's, there's so much to unpack in that. First of all, I think that there's that should, like I should have known. And there can often be some, a little bit of perfectionism, a little bit of shame thrown in with that and a little bit of comparing, you know, like oh, all the, time. because I have been in the industry so long, I should have. And it's right. like when we remove that judgment filter, which is part of the learning process, because you can't learn, we can't learn when we're judging or we're being judged. Yeah. And most of us have had a poor experience of learning at some point in their lives. And I think that part of our job as coaches is really to actually just go if that wasn't there and there was no pressure what could you learn and so and I mean this is such a strangely practical answer but that's why we have a portal that people can learn from because you can come back to it and come back to it and there are people we know that have watched certain lessons five or six or ten times and then it lands but here's the thing does anybody look at how many times someone's watched something and go, oh my gosh, really? It's taken you this long? Like, how no? <laughs> That's the beauty of online learning is that you can pause and go, that makes zero sense whatsoever. Right, go back to the start. I still don't bloody get it. Right, back to the start. Oh, oh. And then like you said, sometimes then you go away, you implement it and then come back a couple of days or weeks or months later and you've grown you've gone to a whole new level in your growth and your mindset and your experience and then you access it in an entirely new way and you're seeing the same thing but you're actually seeing it on a different level and that's the that's one of the most beautiful things of online learning that you can't have face to face because if you miss it you know if you're a bit kind of flaky after lunchtime on saturday that's it you're gone the the, the learning is gone you can you can't get back to it whereas training online is universal and also allows you to kind of access it in different ways. Yeah. And that, and that speaking that specifically, it ties back to another reason that I liked the program that you offered is because I knew, and I think even you told me that in one of our initial meetings that, you know, I could come back at any time and, you know, watch it, move through, come back and it would be available to me at all times. And, and initially I thought, oh yeah, yeah, that won't matter. I'll get it right the first time. <laughs> And, um, but I, I really, really appreciate that, that you know, I, can, I can go back and, and rewind and rewind and rewind and, you know, it feels, it feels very, it's not easy and easy is not the correct word, but it feels very supportive in that manner that I can, I can tr let go of the judgments and of should have known, should have this down, you know, cause I worked for other people. So there's no way I, I would have uh, known all of this and I didn't, and it was obvious and I didn't even know it until I started the program. And then I was like, whoa. <laughs> and often that often happens. It's like, this is, this is what I know that I know. This is what I know that I don't know. And then there's all the rest. And that yes. is where the magic happens out here somewhere. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, it sounds like understanding getting the marketing right and coming back to that and having that kind of uh, revolving door learning learning to do that and being okay with that getting your finances sorted getting the right systems in place for money was important and systemization so then maybe let's sort of move to going from less than 10 clients a week to being fully booked yourself and then the hiring process so what was that like for you were you like yes i'm just really excited to hire someone it's going to be amazing or were you apprehensive about doing that? Like, what was what was it like for you to go out into the world and say, okay, I'm ready to have people working for me? Well, I, a little bit of both. I had a lot of apprehension because I have leadership skills, but I've never necessarily been a manager or a leader. And I knew that I needed to beef up my communication, being clear communi you know, in, in communication. But that was the direction that I wanted to go to grow my business. When I joined with you, I knew that I wanted to have a clinic and hire people and not just have my own stuff. That was my end goal. So, so the apprehension of doing it was kind of waylaid until it like was obvious that we were ready to do that. And of course I had a little, I, you know, I had a moment of like, oh my God, it's happening. It's happening. Can I really do this? 
And I was very blessed because I already had worked with a gal before who um, agreed to come on as part-time for me. So I already knew her. I was really comfortable with her. I was honest and open to saying, hey, this is my first adventure. I've never done this before. So whatever feedback you can give me about being a manager, you know, it was very, it was very easy. And then I was ready to hire a second one. And, um, oh, actually I did. I hired another gal that I knew, but within the first week, it was definitely not a fit. So she, um, so we parted as friends, but of course I had a, you know, a pity party about that and then picked myself up and was able to, um, find another gal who felt very much in alignment. And she just kind of, again, I was blessed. I, I didn't have to advertise. I didn't have to kind of put any marketing out there. I just, I was at a, in a class and I left her a little note that said, hey, I'm hiring part-time. If you ever want to come on board, come check it out. And so she did. And there was some apprehension about that more so, definitely, obviously, right? Because I didn't know her. I didn't know her background. But quite obviously now she's been with me since December. And it just is such a, a lovely, a lovely fit. And I'm still open and honest. I told her to, I'm like, listen, I'm learning all of this myself. So just know that coming on board that I don't have it together and, um, and there will be wobbles. And she was like, okay, that's fine. And, you know, little by little, but we've kind of been able to wobble together. And then the three of us get together and having those, I finally, let's see. So she's been working with me since December and finally in April, I was able to kind of get our first like staff meeting together. Super exciting. And then I got there and forgot all my notes at home. It was, <laughs> and I'm like, welcome to me. We're going to wing it. Um, but it's been, it was, it was, uh, it, I was trying to pick the perfect word for it. And I don't have a perfect word. There was all of it. It was across the spectrum emotionally for me. Like I knew that's where I was going. I knew that's what I wanted. And when it got there, I like, ah, you know, panicked a little bit because now it's really happening. And then just through acting grace and ease, you know, just trying to really bring that in and allow it to be organic. It's, yeah. it's rolled out really nicely. And as a matter of fact, I need to start looking to bring in one other person because one of my gals had to go a little bit less hours. And now that I understand how systems work with the business side of things, her reducing her hours means that we're not, you know, I like the business end now needs to hire somebody else to take up the slack. And I, I never would have known that before. You know, I would have never even thought about that before. So um, super, super cool. And it's been quite a wild ride for the journey of, of even hiring, you know, just one aspect of it. Yeah. What I, th there's two things that I absolutely love about your walk into leadership is that it is so incredibly authentic. Often therapists make the mistake of thinking they have to have it all together before they hire. And I just want to go on the record and say that nobody has it all together before they hire, but we think we have to. And so then it can bring this kind of false front of leadership that we think leadership is of, oh, yep, you know, I know everything. And it's almost like a guarded leadership. Whereas having the right, like having the intention and the culture intentionally created with your mission, vision and values. So knowing what you stand for, knowing why you do what you do, hiring to that, which is how you know you fit the second girl you hired was not a values match because you, and you knew within a week and the, the other ones that are, their values match because their values are similar. And when you have a value of authenticity, being honest with them and saying, like, you're not saying, well, you guys can have whatever you like because I'm terrible at leadership at all. There's none of that. What you're actually saying is we might wobble, you know, we might, this may not be as, as straightforward as it could possibly be, but you know what, we're just going to do it me because the business is a reflection of me. And if that, if that works for you, then you're probably going to be the kind of person that also walks in authenticity is okay to wobble and, you know, is probably going to en enjoy embracing your vulnerability as much as, as we all actually enjoy is say in inverted commas, because vulnerability isn't necessarily joyful, but it is, yeah. it is the birthplace of creativity. And then to be able to have a staff meeting and go, ha, we're winging this takes a certain level of trust to not get flustered. And I think that when you, when, when we allow that vulnerability and that level of authenticity, it means when you're, you know, you're leading a team and everyone's looking at you and there's that, 
have to get this right. Holy shit, I have it. Holy crap, I have it. Then you can you can just drop your notes and go, cool. So I'm pretty sure this is what I wanted to talk about. Uh, and off we go. And they're going to love you for it even more because you're allowing them to be real. You're actually, you're modeling to your team reality and and vulnerability. And how powerful and important is that in the treatment room? Yeah, absolutely. I wanted to say a couple of things, though. I have a high level of perfectionism and expectation of myself, more so than of anybody else, like, you know, most people that I know. And I did have that, that perfectionism come up and kind of grab a hold of, oh, this is what you need to look like as a, as a clinic uh, manager or the owner. This is what you should present. This is how you should be with them. And I, it was you that gave me the permission to just, you know, say, hey, I don't have all the answers. I, I've never done this before. So we're learning it together. And I really like, that's who I am. That's what I give to other people in my life. And it was really nice to just hear that reflected back to me. And it did. It allowed me the space to be like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I live. But that, that, that's not what my initial thought of what I, you know, thought I should present as. Yeah. I was, don't, I was totally going to be the stoic and that's not who I am at all. So having the, the mentorship of giving, you know, that vulnerability space to just be. And then I really took that in and, and let it run the space. And so now we're very comfortable. We, you know, like I, it's not even like I'm the leader, we're a team, you know, and I just say, you know, I just, here's the, here's the stats and let's talk about it. And that's how it works well for me. Yeah. I know other people, I've worked for other people who needed to be the leader and then have a following or, you know, we were, ap- we were the listeners, they were the talkers. Um, my energy doesn't flow like that. I'm very much in conversation most of the time with myself. <laughs> and uh, when I can invite other people into that, it feels like a very wonderful space. And so that's another thing that, that having your mentorship was able to really open me up to allow me to be even more me as in this leadership position, which I didn't know how to do. And now, and I still don't know how, and I'm able to say that. Yeah. And it feels and just fine to me. okay with it. Because we're all, yeah. we're all making it up, Becca. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's the secret to being a great coach is just to be okay with the fact that most of the time we're actually winging it ourselves. Right. <laughs> with our mentorship. But, it, sorry, and it is about just embracing that and being okay with it, you know, like, we're not like other coaches. And it, for me, it took a long time to to be okay with that, to be this crazy, wild, you know, curly head. I don't know anyone who coaches like we do kind of person. And, and now, pff, who cares? If you don't like it, cool. That's fine. If you do like it, come work with us. That's basically, there are your two options. <laughs> and it is, it is so powerful because when we give ourselves permission to that, it actually allows others to give themselves permission to do that as well. And that's the beautiful thing of of coaching for a legacy as opposed to just getting through a problem is that that you then pass that on to each of your team members and each of your team members pass that on to each of their clients that they see and that you see as well. And that is incredibly beautiful. And that's the kind of legacy business that we are talking about when we you know creating the success you desire it's not just about financial gain although that's important because if you're having business coaching we want to see your bank account you know improving as your heart grows and you expand it as a person and being able to pass those blessings on to other people is incredibly powerful and that's really what it's all about so in terms of your business now that you're running this beautifully authentic business you're fully booked for weeks out you're looking at a third team member what would you say to somebody who's thinking of doing the program worth it I believe it's absolutely been the key for me to being able to grab a hold of what I wanted in the future so I would have learned what I could on my own And I would have maybe have joined a different program that kind of gave that blanket overall business coaching. But you've you've hit on a a bunch of things that just keeps reminding me why I joined the program. 
the heart. It was the heart that I felt when, you know, when you were given the information, it felt fun. It wasn't like, you know, a lot of, I need to write this and notes and, you know, craziness kind of, I was able to absorb it because energetically I felt like I was right in vibe with it. And then also the heart, the open heart heartedness that you talk about, I'm absolutely in line with that. So I think that it just speaks so clearly, your whole program, everything that you include in it speaks so clearly to what we as body workers, kind of most of us, I will say most of the people that I know, it just kind of comes naturally. That's who we are. We give, we're big hearted and we love to laugh and we love to have a good time. And then you pack that in with a lot of learning and really if you stay open to the learning part, you know, honestly, the sky's the limit and your program just kind of speaks to every aspect that you need. And um, for someone joining the group, I'd say bravo, you know, it's, it's an amazing journey. Thank you so much for your time today, Becca. It's so beautiful to hear your journey and your story. And I know you're a very busy woman. You've had a massive day. So yeah, we're really grateful for your time for sharing with us today. Thank you. If Becca's story has really resonated with you, if you're listening in going, oh my gosh, this is me too. Uh, I really feel like this is exactly what I need. I really need some, you know, mentoring over a longer time. And this vibe, you know, this energy is really working for you. Then we would love to speak to you. If you've come across this by accident or you come across this case study by design, we're really looking forward to being able to connect with you if this resonates. And if you would like to create a business that is thriving and is done with ease, where things are just flowing the way that you actually want them, where you can set your intention and create the structure and system to be able to make them happen, please make sure that you fill in the steps below um, and we'll look forward to connecting with you soon. 